Ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing? It is Case from Q101. This is a Case 4, a show in which I have coerced management into letting me talk to my favorite bands. On this program, you may have seen Knocked Loose. You may have seen Drain. A lot of the newer bands making noise in the scene today, but that doesn't mean that we can't appreciate the classics. Uh, I was lucky enough to have Smoking Popes on this show in September, and it is my pleasure on the couch across for me to introduce Brian from the legendary Chicago band Sludgeworth. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. I'm awake. I'm here. Is it is it early for you? Is this an early morning? No, you know, actually, I uh, I was up at 4.30. I was at my shop at 5.15, and then I came home, showered, and came. Good. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to ask that you bring that mic real up close to your face there. You know, I'm a drummer, so I don't I don't know what these are. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's a peculiar <laughs> instrument, but it ultimately amplifies, and that is the important part here, is that we are amplifying our voices. So this, so this is educational as well as... We have an educate on the tags. It's comedy. It's music. It's educational. We're learning here. Right. I'm learning. I'm learning something every day. Well, we're going to learn a lot because I want to jump right into it. My introduction to your band, and I'm so curious. I want to know all about this day is as we're speaking right now, we're preparing for the news of 2024 Riot Fest and all the changes and bands and everything. We're, we're so excited. But I was introduced, introduced to you guys at last year's Riot Fest. And you guys played directly opposed to the Foo Fighters. What was that experience like? Um, it, so, it, it, technically, you're a sacrificial lamb at that point. I but, would say that's an apt word to use. Yeah, but, you know, we were so grateful for the invite. And then when they're like, yo, you're you're headlining. And we're like, well, we're headlining Riot Fest. Wow, because we had played Riot Fest years. I think one of the first ones, mm -hmm. Bad Brains, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and so we were excited. But then they're like, and we're looking at the set times, and I'm like, oh, well, we're <laughs> kind of overlapping the biggest band in the world right now. So so our expectations were really low, and we were grateful for a really good crowd. And and it was cool because I had to hear a lot of stories about people walking over. You know, they're like, oh, they caught, like, you know, the two or three Foo Fighter songs. They're like, oh, let's go check out this band we heard about them. So it was it was great. It was it was a big stage for us. Uh it, but the the vibe throughout the entire day and and thanks to Riot Fest was was amazing. So it was was incredible. Uh, what is that experience like? Just playing Riot Fest, being a band that that closes a stage like that. I would imagine they did an okay job, or at least I would hope they did an okay job of taking care of you that day. It sounds like it was a long day, though. Okay, so I, I don't know how long this interview is, but I can I can give you some skinny on it. Please, Once you're treated. They treat every band, no matter if if you're local band or or your or your, you know, national, you get treated like 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 Michael Jackson. Like there is there's, all your meals are catered. You have a, a liaison that you can text and be like, hey, I need you know, I need some colder water, and they'll run it over. It it, it you're you're you get to experience that that uh, lifestyle. Um, we had a trailer. A lot of bands, um, they'd give you the trailer hour before, hour after. And since we were headlining, we had the trailer for the whole day. It had a little yard. We we sat around, we we hung out as a band and, and some of our family. It was it was the most amazing experience of my and I played a lot of shows. I mean, from Screeching Weasel, you know, all the way. It it was the most amazing experience. Like I couldn't I wish every show was like that. It'd be very nice. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> uh, can I ask what was on the Sludgeworth writer that day? What, what were your demands? No brown M and M's. We had we had zero demands. Um, in fact, I took care of the advance, which I didn't even know what an advance was. Um, and it took me about two weeks to go through it. And I had to call some people that I know that manage bands to be like, "Hey, what? Um, you know, we need insurance. Like, what do we need insurance? Like, never had to get insurance. Like, punk rock." Um, you need insurance to play Riot Fest. Oh uh, yeah, really? You have to carry a certain a certain um, insurance. Interesting. I didn't know yeah, that. It's only it's only for the day. Okay. You know, and it's it's <laughs> unfortunately I didn't get it. <laughs> so so at the end of at the end of it, they'll they dock you and they they provide the insurance. Okay, interesting. I for some reason I I, I dropped the ball. So I cost I cost our band a little bit of money, but. That's all right. Um, but we had no writer. Um, our, we had, but pretty much anything you want. I mean, 
all our meals were catered. We had uh, three day passes for the whole weekend. Um, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> usually it's like usually it's like you get like you know you pull up in the venue and they're like here's like a, a old six pack of like hams and, and like two bottles of water and you know you might get bed bugs from the couch if you're lucky if you're lucky so it was pretty it's pretty small. who did you run into that weekend that you like seeing that was that was a loaded weekend i i feel like last year's riot fest in particular was a pretty special lineup okay so on day of i caught a little bit of quicksand i caught a little bit of the breeders um for me personally that's about it. okay um played a lot of pinball day two though i caught uh, you know, we kept running into Corey Feldman too. Ooh, how was that? Super cool. Yeah, super cool dude. You know, he, you know, people, people, people have a perception, and 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 he has a perception of himself. Don't get me wrong, but like I, I'm a pretty good judge of character, and he was pretty genuine. Now, granted, he's a genuine weirdo, but all my friends are weirdos, so it's it's par for the course. Um, so bumped into him like crazy, insane clown posse were super cool the best um i in fact i i ran into the one dude at catering and i'm like hey man i just want to thank you because we're using your lighting rig tonight and he's like oh i feel sorry for you <laughs> um, and then when they played I, I i don't think they played the next day and uh they they were they were super cool they wanted us to spray fago and we were interested at that point <laughs> but uh um, it was cool. So, so on our day, I saw the breeders, I saw quicksand. Um, I saw AFI from side stage, which I, which was only cool because I was about eight feet away from Robert Smith. I was going to ask if he ran into Robert Smith. Did you say anything to Robert Smith? Don't say anything. I, that's, <laughs> what can you say? You just clam up and you look at him and you're like, in fact, it was, uh, it was Joe from rise against smacks me. Oh, I got another funny story too. Um, he smacks me and he's like, any he points and it's Robert Smith watching him. And my jaw dropped and then I, I turned into like a like a 13 year old girl that just saw like Taylor Swift. Um but uh oh so so Joe is with the drummer from what's the band from New Jersey? Um oh did a song with Bruce Springsteen. Oh, oh, gaslight anthem. Gaslight anthem. So, so he, he, he's like, Hey, this is my friend, Brian. He, you know, he was in this band. They were a big influence on us. And, and he introduced me to this guy and, and I'm like, Oh yeah. He's, I'm like, are you playing? He's like, yeah. I'm like, Oh, what band are you? And he's like, Oh, Gaslight Anthem. I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm an idiot. So I just kind of went, you know, slunk up. But after that, um, Davey from AFI was doing yoga next to me like stretching before the show like i'm leaning on like you know like a case and he's and he's doing these like funky stretches and the only thing i could think of the entire time was god damn this man smells amazing oh amazing (laughs) no i did not smell afi he was he smelled like i was like i mean listen To to that for to be the only thing that I could say about Davey from AFI was that he smelled amazing was is is yeah that's high praise it was, yeah I was d- dumb I've talked to a lot of bands that don't smell amazing yes for I, I, I and honestly in no disrespect to AFI if I had to have taken a guess I would have put them in the probably doesn't smell amazing category it smells amazing like I, I I was this close to being like dude what are you wearing. Like, cause this is, this is like a chick getter. Like this is like, <laughs> like my mom would be like, oh, you know, so it, it was, it was that good. Really? Yeah. Wild. That's good to hear. Yeah. All right. I like that. Let's go back in time. Okay. You've got new music out now. We'll, we'll get to that at the end, but let's go back in time because I admittedly don't know a ton about your origin story. I'm curious as to how you started playing punk rock. Okay. So me and Dan, our singer, were in a band, a really crappy punk rock band called the Subverts. And then uh and Dan was friends with the guys in Screeching Weasel. And Dan comes to practice one day and says, Hey, their drummer can't uh tour for the for the record. Can you do you want to do it? And I was like, Well, yeah, of course, you know. I was fourteen going on fifteen at the Before you continue, I love this era of punk because i feel like now like kids are still into it kids are still playing 
but not that young. And I feel like when you when you go back to mid eighties, late eighties punk, it's like, yeah, I was fourteen, I was writing all these songs. I think mean, that's the coolest thing in the world. We didn't have, you know, we didn't have video games, we had phones, we didn't we had nothing to do. Like either you were gonna like get arrested, do drugs, or you were gonna like play Or all three. Or all three. Yeah. And sometimes that happened. But um so anyway, so yeah, so so I said, yeah, I was going to do it. They gave me a list of songs to learn. And then I, the first tour was um, right around Christmas break. So it kind of worked out with school. So I told my mom, and I went to a really crappy Chicago high school. And I, and I told my mom, I said, hey, I'm going to go on tour with this band. And and she was like, well, what about school? And I said, well, you know, it kind of overlaps a couple weeks. So she's like, you know what, just go because you're going to learn more on the road than you will in that high school. That's the coolest mom ever. My mom was the coolest. And, and, this is, this could be a three hour interview because everything started in her basement, um, and even to to this day at our show at Bee Kitchen, she was like, "So can I go?" And I was like, "She's eighty one. My mom wants to go to the show. We'll take care of her." You know, it. I would, but it's Bee Kitchen. It's real small. I was I was gonna have her sell merch. Oh yeah, exactly. She can hide behind the table. So I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I, it. It's just that it's hard for me to uh, be in the moment if I'm worried about. <laughs> She was at she was at our, our reunion show at Cubby Bear years ago, and uh, but I uh, a friend of mine was a bouncer there, so he was like her personal security like big monster. So I was cool then. This I don't know eighty one. It's different. That's tough. Um, I mean she's she's a she's a very vigorous woman. If she crowd surfs, I promise nobody will drop her. We'll all take care of her. I'll tell you, my mom is the type of mom that might at eighty one. <laughs> so she'll she'll direct the the. The pit, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get this. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I so I went on tour, and then I was in the band, and blah blah blah, and I was in Screeching Weasel for a while, and everybody, uh, and we and we're really trying to kind of get rid of it, um, as far as Sludgeworth goes, because it always gets tied to us, and and it's not it's not out of any disdain for Screeching Weasel, but it's like it it, it had its time and place. Um, and so anyway, so me and Dan had left, and we started sludge words with a bunch of friends and it um it was just right all the people were right very different people very different like influences very different but we all kind of got together and that and that was and that was the thing that made everything work is that we had these different influences and we spent our, our guitar player and bass player were roofers which is like the worst job in the world and they would Literally, they'd get off a roof and boom to my mom's basement, case of beer, and and we would play, you know, for hours. My poor parents, my neighbors, I'm surprised we didn't get arrested or evicted. But um, but slowly but surely, you know, more friends would come to practice, and then we'd have like a hundred people in my mom's yard at practice, and then and then we, so then we moved it to like clubs and venues, and you know, things kind of kind of took off. That's that's wonderful. Take me back to that time. In terms of the clubs, because, you know, I'm 25 now, so my version of Chicago was the last 10 years. And so I know there are shows that pop off at Beat Kitchen. You go to Beat, maybe you get Bottom Lounge. And to me, even though I work here and, you know, we're blessed to work with some of the biggest bands in the world, I'm still of the mentality of like, oh, that band's playing the Metro? They're huge. This is awesome. But back then, what were the clubs that really mattered to you guys? So back then we had, it was called Wrigley's. Our first show, I believe it was our first show, was at a place called Wrigley Side, which was like an upstairs bar in Wrigleyville. Um, they were doing shows, I believe Mark Ruvolo from No Empathy was booking shows there for a while. But the big one was McGregor's and Elmhurst. Um, I don't even, I can't, you know, none of us had cars and I don't know how we got to Elmhurst. We always found a way to get to Elmhurst. Um, Cubby Bear was doing shows. Of course, Metro course beat kitchen there was a lounge at the place called lounge x cross street from wax tracks i'm always uh envious of people because i i never got to go to lounge x it was closed by the time i moved here it's i think closed by the time i was born it's real bummer because all i hear is these incredible stories about this venue so we only played at lounge x once and and funny we played there with scream oh really and, and yeah it was right after it was shortly after kirk cobain passed and then we got on this bill with scream and it was funny because dave Grohl, you know Dave Girl was surrounded by all these people. And it, it was, you know, we kind of stayed away. But it was, he would say, he could say, wow, it's really, it's really warm outside. And people would just erupt into laughter. 
And it, we're like, what? I'm not here. And it was funny because he would say things on purpose and then everyone would start laughing and then he would just look at us like, like, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. They were, they were really, he was very cool. It was a very cool, it, they were all, everyone in the band was really cool. So good, good. I'm I'm glad you brought up that show because I'll ask you this question and then I'll let you think for a second as I as I tell a smoking pope's uh, or I'm sorry a braid story actually not a smoking pope story and then I'll I'll let you hear your answer so you can think about it but I was talking to braid at Riot Fest oddly enough last year and I was asking them okay what were the shows that you were on that you look back now and you go this is an insane lineup you know nobody cared in 1994 or whatever but looking back now and they told the story about the time that Jimmy Eat World opened for them and blew them off the stage and braid kicks ass they're an awesome band but they were like oh man we uh we we were in the wrong order here we should have been opening for jimmy world at this time i have two let's hear them both that's gonna blow braids out of the water i'd love to hear them sludgeworth on tour philadelphia i'm too young to go into the bar until we play so i have to sit outside the bar i'm sitting outside the bar a 15 foot truck pulls up the promoter comes out and he says, hey, listen, there's a there's a festival in town. These This band is going to do a one-off show. They're going to play before you. I'm, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, I just I, I just want to get it. It's cold. Like, I want to go inside. It was Tool. Oh, okay. So Tool opened up for us in Philadelphia. Tough act to follow. I snuck in. I snuck in. I'm watching Tool. I didn't know anything about Tool. I didn't know what, what they were. But Maynard... Made her sing it, and there, and at the, literally, there's 15, 20 people in the in the venue, and anywhere he looks, we would all shimmy over and get right in his view, and then he'd look somewhere else, and we'd shimmy over, <laughs> just to be like stupid kids. Oh, I'm sure he loved that. I'm sure he's really understanding of it. And then uh, another time, we played Metro, and somehow Chevelle played before us. Really? Yeah. So that was a that was a weird. I don't know what the situation was, but yeah. And I was like, wow. Those guys are sweethearts. Yeah. They're really, really nice. So that was cool. Um, yeah, those are the two. Yeah, so no, those are great. Tool, tool's a tough one. <laughs> that's, that's, I, yeah. I'd hate to be in the wings going, all right, I guess I'm next. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, but it was, it was, you know, the 90s. I mean, I don't think that, I mean, I think they were on, I think the, the festival was Lala. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. One of the early, early. That's early. awesome. You know, I don't think anyone knew who Tool was, but look at them. They, they found out. Yeah. There you go. Uh, speaking of Chicago music, I'm just curious because, uh, you know, I, I hold you in great reference. Uh, I consider you to be incredibly, obviously, knowledgeable on the scene that you grew up and fostered. For the younger people watching, the younger people listening, you're 30 and under crowd. Is there an album or two that you consider to be essential Chicago punk that everybody needs to go out of their way to hear? Yeah, I mean... Every record by Naked Brain. Yes, that's fair. Um, were they the top dogs, like, when you guys started playing at Sludgeworth and then obviously in a weasel? I mean, who were the bands that you really tried, like, oh, man, if we could only get on their level? You know what? None. No? None. We were, we were like, we were these north side, like, hillbillies just doing our own thing. If you, if you see the, the, the Sludgeworth video for Together Not Together. Uh-huh. We never had like shirts on or shoes. We were like the weirdest hillbillies, like playing this like pop punk music. And it was, it, we, we were just, we weren't trying to be anything. We weren't trying to be anybody. Um, so, no, we didn't really idolize anyone. I remember getting the call from, and I talked to Jeff Pizzotti about this at the Cobra show, but like I remember getting the call. My mom, Jeff Pizzotti called my house. They found my number in the phone book. Jeff, uh, my mom says, hey, there's Jeff Pizza. Some, did you guys order pizza? And I'm like, no, we didn't order. She's like, just some guy, Jeff. And so I go up and answer the phone to Jeff Pizzotti, and he asks if we would open for them at Riviera. Yeah. Incredible. And I, I didn't even go and ask, and I'm just like, yes. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll make that yeah. date. We'll make it work. Absolutely. Um, so that was huge. It was huge. And and because, don't get me wrong, love always love Naked Ray Gun. Ever since they kind of gave us that opportunity, like I'd bury a body for naked. I mean, I was just a hugest for a bunch of hillbillies from the north side to be able to go and play a sold out Revere show with, with naked ray gun was like the biggest gift. That's awesome. And and so with that gratitude comes, you know, so that's pivotal. 
and, and and you'll hear it. You'll you'll hear you'll hear Naked Raygun a little bit of Naked Raygun in every Chicago band. I think that's true. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, Big Black was really interesting, super interesting. It because it was the one thing about Sludgeworth is we've never really um, we've always explored at with with without apologies. And that's what Big Black was. Big Black was like, we're just going to do this weird thing and you're going to hate it. It was great. You know what I mean? It was great. It's going to sound terrible and you're going to hate it and it's going to be huge. And it was, you know. So, so yeah, Big Black, Naked Ray Gun, um, Effigies. Okay. Good. These are good. I, I, I feel some sense of duty of like, I, I get word with history because, and I, not to pontificate on my own generation, but I'm 25 and I, I worry that other 25 year olds don't care about what came before. And I think it's really important that we acknowledge what came before. I think that they, but I think that they know, I think that they, I think that they, they delve a little bit. They have the internet at their feet. This is my whole thing is like, we have every record ever that we can get to immediately we should take advantage of that. Absolutely. Because you're going to find some gems. There's going to be some turds. There's going to be some not so good stuff, but like, but you're going to find some, some really, really like, you know, the Bhopal Stips, which were peg boy, you know, for the most part, um, you know, there's some great stuff. Like the old, I mean, all the smoking pulp stuff is great, but like bands like knuckle dust or gear. And um, you can find that stuff online. Like a lot of them didn't have, Records out or seven, or, or or it's so obscure, yeah, you know. But you can find it, you know. You have that ability. It's great thing. Dig bins and a records. No, but I'd also love to do that. Speaking of things that can be found, new Sludgeworth music can be found. It can be found everywhere. Yeah. Why now? Why new Sludgeworth now? So okay, this is how it happened. Um, Toby from Red Scare wanted to re-release the Loser of the Year that was on Lookout. He wanted to release it on vinyl because it never been on vinyl. And we got, we, that whole project happened as the whole lookout was falling apart. Um, so, I, th- I feel like every year through the last 30 years, lookout has been falling apart. That feels like it's a re- reoccurring story. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's funny because I read articles. They're like, yeah, Sludgeworth, who did year sold tens of thousands of copies? Like, we never saw it. Really? Never not a dime. Nope. Ever. Ever. And uh, yeah, like, we were just glad. We were just grateful to, to be, to have a, to have the music out. The music, that was it. Like, we don't care money, we don't care about it. Even today, we don't care. Um, we're all older. We have jobs. We have families. You know, it doesn't, it's not, that's not like a, unless it's like embarrassing, you know, but that's a different story. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, you got new music out. New How'd music. that come about? Um, so, the he, re, he re-released The Loser of the Year and said, can you guys do a show? And we were like, no way. We'll not do it. We'll, we'll, Way. And I hadn't seen any of the guys. I had moved to Arizona for eight years. We just lost touch, and people started families. Blah blah blah. There was some. There was some differences that never got worked out, and it was just seemed like a bad idea. And we started talking. We're like, "All right, we'll get a shot." And and we rented a room at a music garage. And I, granted, I hadn't seen any of these guys in 10, 15 years, you know, they got in and we played the first song and it wasn't terrible. And we're all like, oh, okay, let's try another one. And then another one. And then another one. And that was it. We're like, yeah, we're going to do this. I mean, granted, it was pretty rusty, but it was still pretty good for, for, for that length of time. Yeah. And, and as we were rehearsing, we cleared a lot of the debris from past breakups um we got on like a whole new page and then come to find out that like we actually really like each other as people you know which is we spent a lot of time we spent a lot of time together and you, and you can get sick of each other pretty quick but we kind of realized that like we figured out as adults everyone who everybody is learned how to navigate it and here we are so then um we're going to do this show at Cobra sells out in like 15 minutes something like that. something crazy and uh we're at practice and we write a song my new song and, and I, somebody told Dan they're like hey we got this you know and Dan's like dude I don't know and he's like we'll send it 
because he lives in downstate Illinois. So he sent it and he sent back the vocals. And we're like, okay, we're doing this. He's like, yeah, it's really good. Oh, God. And that was it. And then and then we wrote another one and another one and another one. Now we're, we're, we'll be recording a new record full length in September. Has that been said anywhere before? No, I'm probably not even supposed to say anything. <laughs> like, but here's the beauty of, of Red Scare and Tobia because I love them to death. There's no contract. There's no... Toby will tell you what he thinks is a good idea and what's a bad idea. And you could do with that whatever you want. And there's no, you won't be penalized. That's wonderful. But I trust the man. And But it's no secret. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't put out, wait, wait, wait. after 30 years, I'm going to put out two songs and be like, see ya. <laughs> right? I'm pretty lame. So no, we have, we, we, we have, we have the material and we're going to do it. And it's, and it's good. If it wasn't good, if it was garbage, if it, I mean, listen, we know what's good music, what's not good, and it's good. Look, I've seen a lot of washed bands, and if Riot Fest was any indication last year, a lot left in the tank with this band. A lot left. And, and and we're in such a great place because we have nothing to prove. It could totally flop. Everyone could hate it, and still going to go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't have to impress <laughs> anybody. We don't have to impress anybody. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like the best place to be in a band. We're not trying to tour... We're not like we couldn't get in a van and do it like that. Like I mean, we could do one-offs here and there. like we went to Milwaukee with Smoking Popes. Time of my life, good. Time of my life, the best guys, the best guys. In fact, we were we were in the the green room at at, at it was like the back room at Collectivo Coffee. It's gone now. It, this was one of the last shows there, but their green room was like real cool. It was real like real hippie, comfy, like coffee everywhere. And and I'm backstage with the all the wives of the, the girlfriends from Smoking Popes, and we're talking about yoga. I'm like, this is the weirdest. This is the most non like rock and roll thing in the world. And you guys go, hey, if you like yoga, check out AFI. That dude smells <laughs> that dude good. Smells good, and he is limber. <laughs> he is a limber man. Uh, all right. Well, under normal interview circumstances, I would say, well, now's your chance to plug the Bee Kitchen show you have coming up. But that show sold out, sold out. immediately. Immediately. And and the great thing, this is the beauty of, for one, we have never played with the boat. That's crazy. Crazy. And I love Daryl dearly. He is just the kindest humor. Secondly, my son's band is open. What's the name of that band? The name of the band is Feral Tap. Shouts out. And uh, he played every show with Slut. He played us. song. Yeah. I remember at Riot Fest. Yes. It was killer. At Riot Fest, at Cobra, Milwaukee, Bottom Lounge. Played it. And so I'm like, dude, you're, you're gonna, they're gonna fire me. They're gonna hire you. And, but I'd still have to pay for you to eat. <laughs> So this isn't going to work. So you got to start your band. So he started a band with our guitar tech and, and the guy who fills in for vocals, cause Dan's in, um, his name's Mike. I was been with us. He's known our bass player since they were babies, like forever. So he would sing while at rehearsals, just vocal cues, blah, blah, blah. So him and my son got a room and, and they're like, we're going to jam. And so I'm like, they're, they're doing the thing. And I'm like, killing time, costing me money, whatever. But then he, he plays me the song and I'm like, oh, you guys are like for real. Like you guys are like actually like you're good. And uh and so now they're just doing their thing and they're and they're and they're we'll be opening up for them soon. I he will be on this couch very soon. Very soon. And 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 I hate and it's like it, it <clears throat> I don't want to I don't want to like build it up because it's my son. I'm building up because because mm. if even if it's my son and they suck, <laughs> maybe you should, maybe you should try skateboarding. <laughs> Be sure to hit the books. You know, I, I don't know if this is uh, the career for you. <laughs> maybe I should just, I, you know, I don't know, man. Computer programming. Yeah, I hear that's a good industry right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something coding. Yeah, right? come on now. But yeah, no, nah, they're good. So it's going to be fun. Are you are you coming to the show? I'd like to. You, you're there. I mean, you're regardless. Have you been to Bee Kitchen? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really hard to maneuver, isn't it? It's... It's a tight room. tight room. It's a tight room. I was just there. There's a great new emo artist. His name is Harrison Gordon. He's got a full band, but his name is Harrison Gordon. He's from Normal, Illinois. I was just there for him. He sold it out. It was his first time headlining that venue. 
It was tight room. Tight room. But it, it could become chaotic very quickly. That's something I love about your show here is that hmm. I live in a world of metal court. Like, like, oh, wow. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm sorry to hear. <laughs> that, that's that's my jam. Like, I don't know anything about, like, I've been in this, like, metalcore thing for 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 a while now, so I don't know about bands. Mm -hmm. I don't know about, like, new bands. But then I see them on here, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to check them out. Like, oh, that's really cool. Like, it's the weirdest thing for me to be into, but but it, it also kind of, well, no, it doesn't prevent me. It actually opens me up to a lot of new stuff. Good. So yeah, like there, there's been some. You've had some artists on here. Where I'm like, oh, check that out. So I appreciate that. Yeah, they, thank you so much. Well, I will be at the Bee Kitchen. Yes, you will. I'll see you there. Yes, you will. Anything else? I see my mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I hope so. Just like, just you know, I don't know, man. Keep in your pants because you know my mom. She's 81. She's 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 a looker. She's a looker. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. Is there anything else before we go? Um, Check out the single. Check out, uh, and if you can, oh, we have one more uh, show coming up in Chicago, and and it'll be in the fall, and that's all I can say. Oh boy, and it's a it's a fest. All right, so I don't know. It's pretty simple math there, right? <laughs> Festival fall, like you do the math, but until then, I can't really. Say. Right on. Well, uh, Brian, an absolute Thank pleasure. You really Thank you so it. much. This is a lot of fun. A Case 4 on Q101. New episodes every Monday on Q101's YouTube channel and its own podcast feed. Again, Knocked Loose, Drain, High Vis, Smoking Popes, and now Sludgeworth can be added to that group as well. Brian, thank you once again. Thank you so much.